สัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมทัสสะภะวะโตอะหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมทัสสะภะวะโตอะหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะพุทธัมมังสัง
create territories. You know, we believe we exist in a world of place. So I can say I live in Britain. But obviously I've never even seen, it's not a very big island. Obviously I've never even seen it. Seen what? I've lived in this place, this monastery for 40 years. Still even in this few acres. I haven't seen most of it. You really look down to get down to it, you know, look into the soil, the earth, the trees, how many have you really seen? You know, how can you remember can you remember them? It's a fuzzy feeling of being at Chitri Vaka, forest, sky, rain, sun, cows, you know, memory, that's where I live. How weird is that? Memories, pictures, images, feelings. The is confused, thinks it's a solid world out there. This is the <laughs> power becoming, extending in, in this world of space. It's a apparent world of space. Certainly phenomena arise, touch, move, sight, sounds happen. Mm. Consciousness occurs, arises, bringing data with it. Yeah, we're in there, in the middle of that, this stuff just washing over, washing over, washing over. Mm. And realizing one day we'll probably leave it. What happens then? Where do I go then? Where do I go then? More of the same. You go to more of the same, because that's what you're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you look at it, it's just staring you in the face, isn't it? Um, the world you create now will be the world you create in the future. Because you, you know, because you, the mind is creating it. Jitter is cooking it up out of what sight, sound, touch, taste, impressions. Probably not even sight and sound, but the piece of sight and sound that interests you, attract you, annoy you. Delight you. It's not even science and sound, it's mental attention. Mental attention. <coughs> mano is the mano attention is the chief of all dhammas, leads them on. What we attend to creates our world. Jit is confused, thinks it's out there. And when your your attention is caught in some obsession, the visual world disappears. It's just wallpaper. And here we are going, worrying about this and that. And when we get done on time, and what's wrong with her? And what's going on? I don't even see where we are. That's 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 where we, that's where it's that's where it lives. Chitta. In all that, mm. spun in its own confusion. And people say, well, what can you do for the world? Is this going to work in the world? Does Buddhism make the world a better place? And just a minute, what, what world are you talking about? What are you talking about? But we absorb so much, Jitter is a highly absorptive medium. We absorb, it absorbs so much, so much data and so much training. And by and large, our attention is trained in terms of social uh, constructions, belonging to nations, living in bodies, being a male or a female, you know, customs and behaviours. Systems and customs, yeah. time and place, and the structures of the mainstream society. Yeah. Get a job, get married, kids, get 
later on, get some money, get a mortgage, get a house, get a dog, and grandchildren, retire, then die. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> the real world. <laughs> but who has any of it, do you know? <laughs> Can you find yourself in any of those those pictures, those 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 plays? Can you really find yourself in them? You find, can you find something that you really are? You know? Aren't they just descriptions that flush through and trajectories that Jitra has thrown along trying to be the good guy, the good woman, the successful this, the popular that, the established this, the progressive that, the what? Who's that? Suffering. Trying to hold it all together. Chit is confused. You take the wrong baseline. Baseline of the person, the baseline of the world, the baseline of time. You try to find peace and harmony and strength and fulfillment in Baselines that are really yeah, mm, precarious, conventional, um, founded on what? Founded on what? On things that have no foundation. The chitta, the heart, for awareness, the mind. And I can't even find what Britain is, apart from some ideas. Yeah. And I can't actually find out who I am, apart from a series of memories and habits and appearances. It's a wrong baseline, isn't it? Can you say who you are, really? Can you say where you live, really? I mean, you can get a little label, and yet, when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, where's that? Where's that gone? What happened to that? Where is it when you're happy? Where is it when you're lonely? Where is it where? In reality, direct experience is the baseline. You come to direct experience, you say, well, there's a lot of stuff going on, for sure. It's like a, like a blizzard. But because of all these accumulations and the confusion of jitta, distortions of jitta, and it's uh, wrong, it's confused foundations. Mm. Yeah. In the ordinary world, we are wasting our time here. Doing for the world, sitting, sitting, sitting in some empty hall. What could it, what, you're wasting your life. <laughs> you could be out <laughs> doing. One of the things I'm grateful to my father for is he he followed the, the conventional baseline, and he said, "Son, don't do what I did." <laughs> 
if you, if you could get through without doing this, good luck, do it. He said, I work, I work myself silly since I was 14. <laughs> Worked, struggled, suffered, headaches, confusion. Yeah. And just trying to get by. And, uh, and the idea is eventually you'll get to the place where you have the golden sunset. This is up 68. And just headaches, worries. And uh, just getting by. And that's how it started. That's a, that was what it's like at the beginning of it. That's what it's like in the middle of it. And that's what it's like at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pick up the hint because you thought it was going to change. Because it said, oh, just round the corner, happiness. Just round the corner. See that corner? Just go around that corner. You go around the corner, there's an arrow saying happiness that way. All right. Just around the corner. So you go around the corner, little sign saying happiness that way, fulfillment. So, right, run faster around the corner, get some money, go around the corner. And you keep around the corner, it's called the rat race. You see the cartoon there? Happiness just around the corner. Keep around the corner, there's another arrow saying happiness that way, run a bit faster. Fulfillment. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing now? I'm running. That's what you'll be doing in the future. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're doing it, right? That's what, you, that's what you trained yourself to do. <laughs> you set your jitter doing that. The world will arise from that basis. The world will arise as a series of amazing things you could do in the future. And then it will be fine. Because that's what the jitter is doing right now. Yeah. With certain obstacles, once you get over those, and there'll be nothing, and you get over that. That's what it's doing now. Can you read it? Mm-hmm. What else does it do? I'm not this, I'm not that. Yeah. I can't do this because I'm not that. Mm-hmm. Confusions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is he trying to make an identity? Is another strong habit. Unless you're trying to make an identity. If you make an identity, you can be sure what that identity will be will be I'm this and I'm not that. That's what an identity is. That's what an, that's the experience of identity. I'm this and I'm not that. I could be that, but I'm this. And if I was that, I'd be this, I'd be better or worse, or something, but I'm this and not that. It's always, it's a dualism. Identity is, is me, is everybody else. Are they better than me, the same as me? What do they think of me? How can I get on with them? That's an identity, that experience. You're trying to find an identity that's stable and comfortable because it's doing that all the time. That's what identities do. <laughs> They go, how am I? Am I? Am I not? What was I? What will I be? What does she think of me? Am I as good as he is? I could be something else in the future. That's what they do. And if you're doing it now, you can be sure it will continue to do that. That's it. That's what the jitta does in the identity dream and the identity project. It generates this restless search for to be something but what's happening <laughs> directly what's happening you know we need that experience craving hunger thirst okay that's on that baseline if you stay on that baseline that's where you will continue to stay Vegeta will continue to stay it will create some different colours to that identity, and different, but it will be the same, basically the same emotional patterning, the same psychological struggle, the same feeling of not enough. <laughs> Could be. And that will continue, because it's staring you in the face, there it is right now. Becoming. 
Now, you know, the direct experience is, is <laughs> it's the way out. Because although it does present some kind of alarming recognitions to, to recognize, you know, you can see this, this kind of whole trap of, of constructed imaginations and, you know, and the patterning of it. But just, be, just bear in mind, this is constructed. Jit is doing this, and it could stop doing that. It could do something else. It could create. It could start with different baselines, and then start weaning it, <laughs> because the confused jitta has lost its foundation. It's lost its foundation in itself. Jitta, pure awakened jitta, is is in it. Is established in its self, in its clarity, in its knowing, in its purity. It's lost that. It's got confused. Sense realm, birth, this whole process has knocked it off its perch, you could say, or it's never been properly on its perch. It's been doing this for a long while. So you wean it. So we say, well, look, let's create a baseline. Forget person. Forget who I am, what I could be and should be, and what other people da 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 da. Just put that one side and let's just stand on virtue. <laughs> you know, and start resonating that quality. Yeah, and this is an interesting one. Because there, there are certain fundamental, uh, what do you call them, formations. Uh, that jitta is gets interested in that radically change its its patterns, its habits. One of them is virtue. Now virtue is, a, is about sorry, it's about mutuality. So it begins to kind of replace the sense of the person in a kindly way. It doesn't dismiss it, it says, well be a good person, which means care for others, have respect for others. So, yeah. so you see, virtue without loving kindness is just law, which is abstract. We're not here to obey laws, yeah, which are basically fear and punishment bound and purely social constructions. I mean, some of them they, they may be useful, but we're not going to all that. But the jitta quality doesn't know what law is, but it knows what virtue is, because that's a direct experience of, it resonates qualities of goodwill, ethical intent. And it's got a particularly strengthening and uh, effect. Nature jitta is rather like, like an energetic form, and you start to resonate this quality of, of virtue, and the jitta begins to come together around that. It starts to it scrambled, it begins to unify around that. Uh, and it's a very healthy unification because virtue always implies there's something else. It's not just the person, it's to you and to you and to you. The non the respect, the non abuse, the valuing of others. And the theme is, can you extend this boundlessly? How far can you widen that? Doesn't mean you have to do a lot, it just means you have to have that heart of intention. And see where you're to non harm. Doesn't mean you've got to kind of you know, have a sort of you know, fantastic doctrine heal the sick. If you can do, that's great. The main thing is that jitta is aligned to the theme of mutual respect, non-abuse, value. We value creatures, we value life. And it lifts, because it's actually found something that is a foundation that makes, that is steady. 
and is about direct here and now. You're not going to be virtuous in the future. There's no point. Say, well, uh, tomorrow I'll refrain from killing, stealing, lying, but we'll get round to it. No, no. No, no, it's not that. It's, it's a touching into that quality called hiriotipa. Okay, conscience and concern. I mean, a real feeling of the tenderness and sensitivity of harmful influences for one's own heart, one's citta, and for others. This was one of the Buddha's great realizations. You know, his first realization was that this wasn't the only time round in this particular sensory field. The second great realization was the nature of good and evil. But these are, these are not just social judgments, these are potent energies and forces that drive the jitta this way or that way. And this is calm. So it isn't just like a, you've been a good guy, but it's not personal. It's just these are energies and qualities that have definitely a potential effect. And the nature of good is it brightens and strengthens, steadies, it comes together in a strengthened, clarified, bright way. Nature of evil goes to darkness, confusion, agitation, ugliness. And these are forces that you can experience, <laughs> you know, you, even just watching your own mind, when the mind gets angry or violent, how does that feel? And when the mind's loving, generous, forgiving, how does that feel? So you've got something you can check in with. The jitta, although it's absorbed, is also, it learns. And you can learn from direct experience. And because of that, because the jitta has the capacity to learn, when it's given direct experience to, to, to handle, because of this factor, there's a possibility for liberation. And because jitta, as it attunes the good, acquires tremendous power, increasing power and strength, there's a possibility to push aside addictive, compulsive behaviours. And because the jitta has a quality of, of brightness and uh, vigor in it, it's also the potential for great happiness, radiant quality. So these, and then, and these are the things you begin to realize the possibilities that are there. And this thing, but the important thing, of course, is that we do the learning process, touching into a direct experience. How is this? Sensing it, listening to it. How is that? And, you keep, and then the jitta can learn. As it learns, it acquires greater confidence, greater strength, greater happiness. And it's able to then push aside or clear or dissolve the obstructions and the confusions that have led it astray. We always start from the right baseline. And so often the, the I go, well how can I? And but I but I but me I'm only at the wrong line. Wrong baselines. <laughs> You've got to be practical. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 43 years old. Can I read it? It's just, you're not 43 years old. There's a, there's a body that was, you know, recorded as arising 43 years ago. Don't, don't go down that line. You know? Jitta doesn't move in terms of time. You know? Now you're here. 
and there are obsession, obstructions and accumulations for sure and there's the possibility of direct experience and finding the correct baselines in strength and power and clarity and happiness will arise check it out okay you know what I mean? cultivate so you look at something like virtue not from a fear basis, but from a love basis, the respect, the sensitivity, yeah. and the self respect. When you're living in an atmosphere of respect, that's essentially what it comes down to. It's something strengthened and clarified by that. And you get perspective on those voices and those sounds that go, ah, oh, bothers and yes, I mean, that's called evil. So it's slurring, sliding, collapsing, can't be bothered. How's that for you? Learn it. Learn it. What's that? Yeah, you see. Because <laughs> it's not so easy to, to see until you've got that something you can measure it with. Now, you know, practice, process is, is pretty s- simple in many ways and the theme is to keep it something that is simple training. For the mind, yeah, essentially you can always get it down to single process. You know, one, one, one way this is talked about is Vitaka Vichara, means you place your attention on something and you feel it. Right there. Place your attention on it. Mm-hmm. Place your attention directly on how it feels, how it happens. Not that you think about it, how is it? And you would do that repeatedly because, by and large, attention is learned to interpret and add its own interpretations to experience rather than be direct. Mm. Its own views. So we do something very simple, like, you know, sensation in the body. How is that? A thought in the mind. It's a great thought, it's a train of thoughts stupid thoughts, what's thinking like, what's the ethical quality of that. So this also is called proper attention, or deep attention. Don't go into the story, just notice how it feels to have the story. Mm, That story's been going on a long while. That story about me and what I am, what I'm not, has been going on a long while. How's that feel? (laughs) You've had that thought how many times? You've had that train of thought how many times? Where did it go? Well, it's going to go there again, isn't it? Because that's, that train goes to that station. <laughs> you get on it, it goes there. Come on, it goes there. Come on, it goes there. Come on, it goes there. You don't go into the 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 the, ver- the words so much as the emotional push, you know, the frustration, or the everybody thinks, or I'm not, or I've got to, or it's my fault, or it's her fault, or nobody cares, or how's that? Touch it. Open to it. Listen to it. What's needed? So jitta can also respond to its own. When you get direct experience, there's going to be this response, which is always going to be whatever removes the stress. Calming, gladdening, firming, 
reminding, you know, various things. But essentially, you touch, experience, and you listen. And how is that? When you hear great art, how is that? And often the Buddha would ask, one of his main teaching methods is to do exactly that. He would say to people, what do you think, friend? Is it this or is it that? And does this lead to suffering or not? Is this praised by the wise or not? <laughs> what do you think? Hand it over, touch it yourself. You're using it like this. Remember the metaphor is perhaps like the finger. You put your finger on something, you place it, and you feel it at the same time. It's not like you think it and then you feel it. As you touch something directly, just like you put your finger on something, there's the placing and the sensing. You push too hard, you lose the sensitivity. Right, what's this about? I can't understand this. What's this about? I've got to get to the point of all this. I've got to figure this out. I've really got to get this worked out. What? What? Oh. <laughs> Your finger's sore. <laughs> That's what you're doing. And so you touch lightly. Because the aim of the finger is not to, not to push anything, but just to place and then, then listen. And this is also is a training to do because, you know, other social conditioning is to do it, is to have that finger that pushes. Get on with it. Push the button. You know, make it work. Try it. Push, push. A lot of that imperative, not and not so much receptive. Receptive is wasting time when we could be doing important things, getting more things done, poking our fingers at more things, <laughs> stabbing more buttons. But you didn't actually receive the last thing you did. You didn't listen to it, because you thought, I'll oh, push that and then go up to the next thing. That's called work, isn't it? You get as many of those done as possible. So, you train like that, yeah. I'll get this done and then I'll get and I'll get and I'll get and I'll get and I'll get no because your finger is doing exactly the same thing. If you're doing it now, it's going to keep doing it. Because <laughs> that's what you're training it to do. <laughs> keep going to the next thing. And the idea that you're going to get to the end of it. <laughs> you get a sore finger, that's all. Then you go, oh, okay, all right, feel better now. Right, let's go back again and do some more. <laughs> But you haven't actually listened to a single thing, <laughs> taken it in. You know, and a finger, like a mind, is not just a driver, it's also a listener. And this has to be, this has to be cultivated. Because it's not that impressive in worldly terms. World is about pushing out everything. This is just like a light touch. How's that feel? Uh, do it again. Light touch. How's that feel? Um, okay. Foggy. Okay, foggy. How's that? Touch. Foggy. Mm. Unhappy. Okay. How's that? Unhappy. Uncertain. Insecure. Anxious. Worried. Okay. <laughs> What's needed? Breathing in, breathing out, steady. Hmm. You got to the point. You do this with your mental patterns. Yeah. And you do it. Yeah. Do it recollecting. And you also say there's other other themes. You do it with virtue, honesty. Have you touched your virtue? Have you lingered in it? Listened to it? Enjoyed it, made much of it, found out why it works for you, or did you just follow the law? Did you just follow the rules? Or did you actually listen to your virtue? <laughs> and how's that feel? 
It's into the heart. It comes up to you. And situations like this are great for that because you, know, you do make virtue a baseline. But it's not just about fear and punishment and moral superiority, but about touching many times that place of integrity and concern and listening to it. That's the force. The jitta comes to get around that and says, well, that doesn't matter. Fame doesn't matter. Reputation doesn't matter. Place I live doesn't matter. My appearance doesn't matter. Not important. I've got a baseline that I can actually tune into directly arises in my chitta. It's mine, if you like. You know, it fills me and it nourishes me and it makes you feel good. The rest of it is just opinions and views. And you can pull these down, you know, virtue, the Buddha said, just recollect it. You can recollect Buddha. You know, Buddha, statue, Buddha. Some guy a thousand years ago, noble man and so forth, probably looked down on me anyway, I was so worldly. <laughs> but this is a major, major theme. It's just the recollect awakening. What? What? Awakening. Wise. Awakening. Free. You start tuning in, tapping some of these meanings. You just go, oh, look at that. Integrity. And the recollections of the Buddha, the, there are the various recollections that are there in our chanting, which we probably just get through to get to the bit where we stop and meditate. But we could also use those, <laughs> rather than getting through them, <laughs> to linger in. So, you know, you're saying this, oh, blessed Lord, and the wonderful, bright, and blessed Savior of gods and humans. And then, da 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 bow three times then. <laughs> Just, woo. But I can just take some of that welfare. That which is for the welfare. You know, a guide. And tune into that. It's a game we're not so good at because of this incredible thing called the person, this identity stuff. It's, I'm, I'm, in, I'm my own person. I can do this, or I'm not going to do this if I don't agree with it. I think I don't think that's very good at all. I've got a better idea. I'm going to do it my way because I'm a free individual person. That's what I am. And you can't give me this Buddhist wash. I'm going to figure it out for myself. <laughs> How does that feel? <laughs> who, is, who is the free person? <laughs> who can think for themselves? Most of what you're thinking has come from somebody else anyway. Most of the thinking we have is just social conditioning. The language is socially constructed. The references, the values, they're all, we've been, they've been inducted into our, into our consciousness. So you really think, you know, you want to free the jitta from the person. Let's say you pause. The person's not really a valid baseline. What the valid baseline is awakening. Possible. Guidance, training, there's a way, there's leadership that you could rely upon. Mm. Rise up. Mm. We start to recognize the power of the jitta when it begins to steady and straighten and rise up. And it begins to radiate. Particularly once you've cultivated this process of 
vitaka vichara, so you stand in tune to the right things and listen and feel them, the energies of those positive qualities have got a definite effect. You start, the heart starts to shine, radiate, open. And it begins to, and if you practice meditation, it comes into your body. Your body starts to settle, nervous energies cool down. Uh, parts of your body start to open up. You know, shoulders drop, chest opens. Oh, feeling warm. The samadhi. You get these absorptive effects. Suddenly, this thing, you know, which from the outside is what it is, becomes something rather luminous and bright mm-hmm. and strong. And you can sit in that and the pain disappears and the fatigue disappears and the heaviness disappears yeah, and the itchiness disappears. Yeah. It's got that, that power to it. Because it's a, the power of the heart is just something we never really we <laughs> lost realization of. Because by and large in the mechanist age, all the power of the human being has been exported into devices, machines, and systems. We've given it away. <laughs> You know, we've exported it into books and systems and laws and social structures and devices and so forth that we can't live without. Right? Where did it all come from? Ichita. And it's now there. And now I need an expert to tell me how to do anything because I've managed to export all my intelligence. <laughs> You know, people can't find their way down the street without a GPS. And it's all got in the, you know, This is like bringing it all back home. Because the intelligence that we're using here is intelligence to get out of suffering and stress, out of confusion, into purity and awakening. And that's not just theoretically, it's a felt, directly felt experience. The weight disappears, the stress melts away, and the world changes very radically. There's a place and experience where there can be generosity and sharing, where there can be something unconstrained, un- unrestricted by a time and place. And according to the ones who've really developed this, unrestricted by aging, sickness, and death. If the Dharkata dwells with unrestricted chitta, unrestricted by feelings, perceptions, forms, consciousness, defilement, suffering, aging, sickness, death. That's the potential. And we start very hungry, just this, how's that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we say, try that. Mm-hmm. Try generosity. Mm-hmm. Try virtue. Mm-hmm. Try loving kindness. Try sitting still and bringing your awareness into your, into your entire body. Mm-hmm. And sweeping steadily. Try tuning in to experience just your own body breathing with no deadline and no have to make it into something. Try tuning in to your, to your own mind when the thoughts begin to soften and you experience the silences and the spaces. Try tuning into that. Start to things really open up. And it's not that the person is there making it happen. You know, this is one of the major obstacles of all, all practice and even all teaching, is you can't really find a language for 
that doesn't get set up the idea that there's a person doing it and a person achieving it because the way the language we're using doesn't <laughs> it always has to have somebody there doing it but you know, so we'll do a direct experience is there anybody listening? there's listening, but is there any person listening? there's talking, is there some person talking or is it just mind bringing up ideas and reflecting? does there have to be one? And we so, you know, there's a sense of just really learning to discard and spend time even just beginning to discard these unnecessary constructions. Time, place, identity. Tune in. This is always configured as a fundamental entry point. The Buddha said, when I reviewed, I discarded all the obstructions the, of my worldly life, I began to review that and put that aside. Then the citta settled, steadied. It's called samadhi ati. It went into samadhi, it attained one pointedness, you had a sense of right. I want to get I'm coming together, you know, I'm collecting together. I got a sense of purpose. And then I applied that. And then there was there was application to that that you picked itself up and this is where I'm going. And there's a certain uh, inevitability about that, um, that process. <coughs> yeah. But once you've started Really, that's just has begun to wake up. It's difficult to go back to sleep again. You know, you, you, you do get confused, lost, stray, doubt, worry, difficult stuff, but you begin to recognize them. This is all just obstructions, confusions, and there's a way past this. So as we enter meditation time and spending more time meditating, whatever that is, sitting still, just steadying, 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 calming, distilling, clarifying. This is this is <laughs> this is a, you know developing huge potential, huge potential because you you know for 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 transformation, and it always seems on on some level so. Feeble, you know, sitting there and feeling tired and pain in the legs and so forth. Don't go into that. You know. it's, it's not find the places which which give you a sense of steadiness. Don't go into the difficult stuff. Go into the good. Go into the place where you do feel steady. If that's a mantra, so be it. If that's the sound of silence, so be it. If that's the end of an out breath, that's fine. You find the place. You're not here to have, you know, a meditation is just a technique. It's like, it's like ethics is just a law. Meditation is not a technique. And virtue is not a law. You, know, you, you use skillful means where the jitta can get access to something you can touch, listen to, and be furthered by. And, You've got the possibility to, to find that, the necessity to find that. Because as far as I recognize, listening and talking to people, no two people meditate the same. Because each, each jitta has its own configurations and difficulties and weak spots and obsessiveness. So you, you're going to actually keep touching directly, opening, listening. What's needed? What's needed? And until you get that response, walking is needed, standing is needed, sitting is needed, chanting is needed, expressing gratitude is needed, recollecting one's own virtues is needed. Yeah. And then you start to 
find these ways in which your chitta is constantly steady and trained and there's nothing to do so much good and nothing that spreads so far nothing that casts so much light nothing that brings so much good into the world as a well-trained chitta so it's my encouragement for your practice and uh, your welfare this evening. Thank you. Namayam Dhamma Uvadhita